yes. Welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily, where you subscribe for a video on crypto every single day. My name's Austin and team, let's just get right into it. Today is gonna to be a great video. Let's take a look at the market. As you can see, we had a bit of a dip yesterday um, with billions of dollars outfluxing away from the market and Bitcoin down over 7%. A lot of people are wondering why. Now check this out, while Bitcoin is down over 7%, Bitcoin dominance still remains very high at above 48%. So check this out, not only did billions of dollars leave Bitcoin, but they, they didn't go back into the other altcoins, at least not many of them. It's simply leaving the market. And so let's talk about it. If you guys wanna stick around to the end of the video, I wanna share with you why Forbes.com says the Bitcoin price is tanking. Here's why. We're gonna see what they say, and then I'm just gonna offer my own perspective. So stick around to the end for that. But first, let's go over the news. I have pulled the most relevant headlines for us to go over. I just wanna clue you guys in, keep you guys relevant with cryptocurrency today. So if you guys uh, like staying relevant on the cryptocurrency markets, market, then you are gonna like this video. So let's get into it. Cryptocurrency exchange Binance buys Ethereum wallet service in first ever acquisition. Now check this out, I'm actually just noticing this now. Binance coin, one of the few altcoins that is up in this very much of a bear move that the market pulled. And this could be the reason why. Anyway, they have acquired an Ethereum wallet service. Binance, one of the world's two largest cryptocurrency exchanges, has just completed its first ever acquisition. According to TechCrunch, the Malta-based exchange operator, i.e. Binance, acquired Trust Wallet, creator of a mobile Ethereum wallet that includes support for Ether as well as ERC-20 and ERC-223 tokens. Um, so Binance acquired a wallet that can hold Ethereum tokens. And while terms of the deal have not yet been disclosed, Binance confirmed that in order to acquire Trust Wallet, um, they included a mixture of cash, Binance stock, and Binance token. Well, if there's one thing Binance has, I think we can assume is they have a lot of Binance token. Um, but I've never really heard of Trust Wallet, so why would they want them? Well, check this out. Trust Wallet is not one of the better known Ethereum wallets. It has about five, it only has about 50,000 downloads on Android through the Google Play Store, earning a 4.6 out of five star rating from only pretty much a thousand plus reviewers. And uh, for comparison, I'm Token, the most popular Ethereum wallet, has more than five million monthly active users, most of whom are based in Asia. So compared to five million monthly active users, Trust Wallet simply has a measly 50,000 downloads. Hmm, why the heck would Binance want Trust Wallet? Let's read a quote directly from the Binance CEO, Zhao. The Trust Wallet team shares the same values as us, and the products are very complimentary. For users who like to withdraw funds into a wallet, now have a product that they can use. So, sort of a passive aggressive statement from the Binance CEO. For those crazy users that like to withdraw funds into a wallet, I mean, safely, all of us should store our funds into a wallet. But anyway, Binance now has a wallet that they, I guess, back. And uh, check this out Zhao said that the Trust Wallet will continue to operate independently, with Binance providing some administrative and marketing support and otherwise serving as just a godfather to the wallet service. So let me ask you guys a question. Is this simply about just you know, having, an, having their exchange be able to offer a wallet? Um, I mean, it seems like a very minimal wallet for them to want. Well, it's not all, it's not all about that. Check this out. The trust wallet acquisition comes as Binance is actively working on building a decentralized exchange, DEX, complete with its own public blockchain. Such platforms, which have also been announced by several other major exchanges, uh, will allow users to trade cryptocurrency 
without entrusting their funds to a centralized custodian and placing them at risk of hacks and exit scams. So while, while I really like Binance and it's one of the most popular exchanges, it is centralized. And you know, some of the fear in that is, you know, something that's centralized could be shut down by a government, you know, could be could have some fraud with, you know, the CEO, not that I'm saying this guy would cause fraud. But anyway, so, something that's centralized can be controlled by man. So Binance is making the right moves. And you know, they're working on building a decentralized exchange. And this wallet uh, is one step further in something they can offer with that DEX. Zhao said that the trust wallet will serve as one of the Binance DEX's default wallets so it's not clear when the platform will go live. So point is, Binance is making moves to stay relevant uh, as they work on their decentralized exchange. And now they have a wallet. And that must be the reason that they're up a little bit. Let's keep going. Bullish news out of Thailand. Thailand's largest movie theater chain will accept cryptocurrency. Myself and my brother who, who run this channel, we live in Los Angeles and uh, we are surrounded by the entertainment industry slash we are in it. Um, and so anything that ties the two together feels good to me. Check this out. Major Cineplex, Thailand's largest movie theater operator, is integrating cryptocurrency payments to allow moviegoers to buy everything from tickets to popcorn with Bitcoin and other uh, digital currencies. This is awesome. This is going to open up a lot of people Regular good old fashioned people go to the movies and now those people will be introduced to cryptocurrency. The Endeavor follows a partnership with Swiss fintech developer Rapids, Rapids Pay, wherein the multiplex operator will deploy, oh my God, will, de will deploy a digital payment ecosystem built by the, by the latter firm. Very wordy. Point is they are gonna integrate cryptocurrency at the point of sale machines at its theaters. So much like you know on these uh, websites where it's just you can click, use PayPal uh, at these point of sale uh, places in the theaters, like just where you pay for tickets and pay for popcorn, you can just choose cryptocurrency. And if you're wondering how many people this will affect, major Cineplex owns 678 screens across Thailand including seven in Cambodia, nine in Laos, which plans to expand to 1,000 screens by 2020, Forbes reports. Huge green flag that's gonna introduce many, many people to cryptocurrency. And if that wasn't enough, the chain's founder, Visha Puvaraluk, also owns Miktai, the company with the developmental license, licensee for all McDonald's outlets in the country operating 250 McDonald's restaurants in Thailand. So Thailand really paving the way with cryptocurrency, now going to movie theaters, you know, potentially, potentially, hopefully we'll be going to McDonald's sometime in the near future. And just to put it all in perspective, in terms of how Thailand is warming up to crypto cryptocurrency, the developments come at a time when Thailand is proactively emerging as a friendly jurisdiction for the cryptocurrency, blockchain, and ICO ecosystem under regulation. Thailand's official securities market regular, regulator said it realized the potential of ICOs back in late 2017. And then in March of this year, the governor of Thailand's central bank confirmed Authorities were working on legislation to comprehensively regulate the cryptocurrency sector. To that end, the cabinet of Thailand approved two royal decrees drafts aiming to regulate crypto transactions and enforcing taxes on adopters. So while regulations to some people may sound scary, it's very much needed uh, and it's very much going to usher in mass adoption starting in Thailand, you know, hopefully expanding to other places. Uh, and it sounds like Thailand is taking a friendly approach and wanting to, they don't want to ruin it, they just want to regulate it. Um, just wanted to clue you guys in. I'm going to be talking to you guys in the comments. So if you have opinions on any of these things, let the community know what you guys think. We will be listening. Let's keep going. And at the end, don't forget, I want to clue you guys in. The Bitcoin price is tanking. Here's why from Forbes.com themselves. Three more news articles. 
Another green flag. Oh, I'm sorry. Another red flag. Kroger grocery unit to ban Visa credit cards. Green flag for crypto, red flag for credit card companies. Why would a popular food, food grocery outlet ban credit cards from Visa? Well, Foodco, a unit of Kroger, the largest supermarket chain in the US, will no longer accept payments from customers using credit cards issued by Visa, the largest credit card company in the US. Well, the grocery store chain announced the policy change on Monday, saying it was due, it was due to Visa's interchange rates, which merchants pay which merchants pay to banks whenever a customer uses a corresponding card at the store. So they're canceling it because of high rates. This is a quote from the Food Co. Visa's rates and fees are among the highest of any credit card brand. Food, Foods Co. said in a statement, the savings, will be, will be, the savings that they're now saving from uh, not, no longer accepting Visa credit cards will be passed along to the Food Co. customers in the form of low everyday prices uh, on the item shoppers, per, the items that shoppers purchase most. So point is, just a little bit of a green flag for crypto. Visa's out, and you know what, Kroger, if you're listening, something that would offer even lower minuscule fees would be cryptocurrency. And guys, think about this. Any retail store that issues in cryptocurrency, whether it's movie theaters in America or somewhere else in the country, or grocery stores, how much more of an influx of cash would that business receive just from opening itself up to this emerging community? Uh, I think when we start to see maybe one grocery unit, one movie theater in the United States, in England, in Australia, any of these places open their doors to crypto, I think it's going to be the domino effect because other people want that revenue. No reason that they wouldn't. Two more articles. One is talking about Omise Go uh, and scaling and adoption. And this first, next one real quick, Ripple. Ripple taps Bill Clinton himself to give keynote at upcoming conference. The former US president, Bill Clinton, will headline Ripple's Swell Conference later this year. The cryptocurrency payments startup announced Tuesday. And in terms of what he'll be doing, the 42nd president of the United States will both give a keynote address and participate in a question and answer session. Ripple said in a press release. So he's going to be talking and then answering a Q&A. The conference will take place in San Francisco over the first two days of October. Now, when I saw this, you know, Ripple has been known in the past to bring heavy hitters into talk about cryptocurrency slash themselves. They had Ashton Kutcher on Ellen donating uh, millions of Ripple to her wildlife fund. And this is just a piece of news that we're not going to dive into, but this is dropping just yesterday. Ripple partners with Madonna to fundraise for orphans in Malawi. Um, so this is not the first time Ripple has partnered with a big heavy hitter, quote unquote, celebrity. So that's what all I thought of the Bill Clinton, situa Clinton situation, but they, they uh, form a good point on why Bill Clinton. Clinton helped usher in a period of extreme growth and adoption of the internet. As president, according to the release, uh, he ushered in the, helped usher in the internet. He also oversaw programs which helped communities and individuals gain access to the internet during his presidency. So true, I had forgotten about that. You know, that's when the internet came into its own under his terms. So he is familiar with emerging technology that could help um, communities. And last quote before we get into this last piece of news, these learnings are perhaps more relevant now than ever before. Like the internet boom of the 90s, we are at an impasse. Digital assets and blockchain technology offer a way for value to be exchanged as quickly as information, creating more financial inclusion and economic opportunity. However, with this new technology comes potential for concern, requiring thoughtful policy to protect consumers from risk without hampering innovation. Yes, new, with nuke technology comes new concern, and a lot of people, a lot of older people especially, trust Bill Clinton. Times were good, a lot of times, uh, when he was president. So, good piece of bullish news. Last news article, then we're going to get and answer the big question, 
the Bitcoin price is tanking, here's why. But just a little reminder, if at all you guys got any value out of today's video, if you like just this fast pace, getting you guys the information that you need, uh, just please give this video a like. It would just help me grow as a channel. Let's keep going. Where Omise Go founder sees massive where Omise Go founder sees massive Ethereum scaling and adoption by 2020. So let's check it out. Jun Hasegawa, the founder and CEO of Omise Go, an uh, altcoin that we're very bullish on on this channel. If you guys want more information, we actually did a deep dive on Omise Go back in the day. Uh, the founder and CEO at Omise Go, a billion dollar blockchain network launched on top of the Ethereum protocol, has outlined the future for Ethereum and the roadmap of its growth over the next two years. So yes, uh, Omise Go is launched on the Ethereum platform, much like Tron was. You know, now Tron has their own cryptocurrency, much like uh, VeChain was. And of course, these people, they went off, they used Ethereum as a jumping off point, then they made their own. Uh, well, Omise Go is still on top of Ethereum. So real quickly, we're gonna check this out. Hasegawa noted that the correction uh, so yes, the market has, since January, since we saw all-time highs seven months ago, uh, we had a bit of a correction. And Hawagasa noted that the correction, which is still ongoing, has allowed the market and developers within it to build products and scaling solutions to support the next rally. So according to the CEO of Omise Go, the loss of 70 to 90% of a lot of altcoins um, since January of this last year is a good thing because it has allowed developers to build within the product. I like that. Well, in November of 2017, Ethereum co-founder, we all know him, Vitalik Buterin, this guy right here, uh, who has also advised Omiseko since last year, said that the 50 billion market cap of cryptocurrencies cannot be justified without demonstrating a huge impact on the traditional finance sector and the full potential blockchain, tech, blockchain technology. So he's saying uh, right now it's about a quarter of a trillion, but he was saying back when the market cap was about half a trillion dollars, um, he's saying you can't have this much money without offering, <laughs> without having some value to back it up. So he specifically said, so total crypto coin market cap just hit half a trillion dollars today. But have we earned it? And this was, you know, seven months ago or multiple months ago, but have we earned it? How many unbanked people have we banked? How much value is stored in smart contracts that actually do anything interesting? The answer to all these questions is definitely not zero. And in some cases, it's quite significant, but it's not enough to say that half a trillion, to say it's 0.5 trillion levels of significant, not enough. So he's saying the cryptocurrency community uh, and especially the projects that he's involved in, has to offer more value. Um, Hasegawa said, now we're moving back to the, up to this year, to, in 2008, said 2018 has been a year of ecosystem building. A very positive framing on this year. Uh, with progress being made, well, the, he's true on this, being de made in development of sharding, Casper, Plasma, interchain protocols, which are crucial technologies that are necessary to achieve hundreds of thousands of transactions to a million transactions per second on a public blockchain network. So yes, just to bring it all home, uh, massive scaling and adoption is a problem I, or a potential for a solution with Omise Go and Ethereum is because Ethereum, a second generation cryptocurrency, can't handle at the moment all the scaling and uh, volume that a cryptocurrency would need uh, to to be the to be the crypto that has mass adoption, right? EOS, um, Stellar, um, a lot of these other cryptocurrencies are aiming to be that solution. So Ethereum has to, you know, uh, catch up or die basically. And to wrap it all up, Haga Hasegawa further emphasized that in the next two years, throughout 2019 and 2020. Ethereum will see real business adoption, more large-scale decentralized applications, dApps, massive scaling, and adoption by the government, all based on the development of scaling technologies in 2018. So, in 2017, last year, it was speculation. 
ICOs, we didn't have a working product. 2018 changed, there were scaling solutions, interchain protocol, Shard and Casper, that's this year. Um, these solutions are being created or starting to. Well, he's predicting in 2019, we see real business adoption and uh, more dApps. And in 2019 to 2020, a massive scalability and use by the government. We will see huge. We will see huge difference between a real, adoptable protocol and toxic speculation project. So you know, I agree with them. A lot of these projects they're receiving so much money just on pure speculation, and I'm glad to hear that Vitalik for Ethereum, and Omise Go. Um, I mean, obviously they wouldn't give up. But anyway, they're aiming to compete with some of these third generation cryptocurrencies that are easily or more uh, at the top of their minds uh, to, to handle the scaling issues and the volume issues. Anyway, that's the news for today. Let's talk about Bitcoin. The price of Bitcoin is tanking. Here's why. According to Forbes.com, well, first, just a little summary. The Bitcoin price bull run over the last month, which saw its climb from uh, just a few weeks slash months ago, 6,300 to highs of just a few days ago, 8,400 in a matter of weeks could be over. Bitcoin has slumped by 5%. Now it's 7% over the last 12 hours and is falling well below the psychological mark of 8,000. And again, Bitcoin over, falling below 8,000 just a psychological mark, but nonetheless a mark. Um, why do they say it is? Well, they live a, uh, list a couple of reasons. And keep in mind, this is Forbes.com. So this is what the majority of the world basically is reading because they're really not reading, you know, coin, crypto coin news or coin telegraph or anything. So from what most Americans and most of the world are seeing, um, one reason is South Korea. South Korea, which has emerged as one of the most important markets for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in recent mon months due to its large volumes of trading, is mulling whether to pass a law that would end tax benefits for cryptocurrency exchanges. So they're deciding, are they going to end a law that benefits crypto? Local authorities were cited as saying cryptocurrency transaction brokerage is not effective in generating added value. So they're basically saying in South Korea, uh, the tax benefits for cryptocurrency exchanges is really not offering um, the ecosystem or basically them any added value. And I'm not gonna read this whole thing. I'm gonna leave this link for you guys to check out more about South Korea. But they're stating that this is one reason that Bitcoin lost 7%. Uh, I don't, that's, like, that's not it. I mean, I'm no financial expert, but um, they're just talking. Uh, they're just talk there's no, they're just talking about, you know, ending a tax benefit law. That's nothing. Uh, what's another reason? Well, a report out earlier today from Wired Magazine shone a light at some of the issues and problems many power-hungry Bitcoin miners are facing around the world as cities and governments are trying to find a way to manage them. What are these problems from Bitcoin miners? Well, the companies, the companies for mining are using ex extraordinary amounts of electricity typically thousands of times more electricity than an average residual residual customer would use, said a spokesperson for the New York State Department of Public Service told Wired. The sheer amount of electricity being used is leading to higher costs for customers in small communities because a limited supply of lower of low cost hydropower. Okay. I mean, these are all relevant things. Yes, the pricing of Bitcoin mining is getting higher and higher. That's true. Does this deserve to be in the article that says the Bitcoin price is tanking? Here's why. No, no, it doesn't at all. We are, everybody in the crypto community is very aware that the, the price of mining is, is increasing. It's been doing that since 2009. Uh, this article does give one uh, good thought in this article, though, saying, however, there are plenty of there's plenty of good news about the about the moment, good news about at the moment for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. The SEC is currently weighing whether to approve um, the ETF, and it will be decide, expected decision will be in August, uh, middle of this month. Though many are wary, it could be delayed for a number of months. Anyway, 
This article gives nothing concrete. It lists uh, things that we already knew in the crypto com community. Um, so to me, this I didn't see any value of this, especially since this is what the majority of the world, world is seeing. But I would just like to offer my perspective on the market. Yes, the market did take a little bit of a dip. And yes, uh, two days ago, I put out a video saying, is Bitcoin headed to 10,000? And I was just, we were just looking at the market historically and today. Obviously, we had a bit of a correction. In my opinion, let's go to the last one month. We were due for a little bit of a correction. This much of one, I don't know, but you know, you can't keep going up forever. We needed a little bit of a correction. And guys, I think we can look at this one of two ways. Let's go to the last year. Um, this could be, uh, some people are saying it's due to insider trading. Uh, if you look on the Reddit forums and everything, people are saying that we already know, um, you know, or insiders already know that the SEC has not, has made their decision, you know, internally and will not allow ETFs to be traded. And the insiders know this and they're selling out first. Could be. You know, I have no clue. Um, if that is the reason, if you guys think that's what it is, then, you know, we should expect Bitcoin to maybe go to 5,000, maybe go below. But I want to zoom back to 2017. So this happened, and we're going to zoom in just a little bit. This happened in August of last year in 2017. Check this out. Yes, the marker was going up, 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 up. We saw a big correction. This looks like nothing now, but it was a huge it was a pretty massive correction back in the day and people thought hey is bitcoin gonna go, go below 2000 again it didn't it kept going up and up and up and then we saw the biggest bull run we ever saw so while it could be insider trading could just be a healthy correction that the market usually always has um and that's what i tend to think it is i mean we'll see time will tell that's why you guys subscribe to this channel to stay informed um i make this promise to you that uh, we're going to keep you guys informed as best we can but I guess I just want to end this. Let me know why you guys think we saw this massive correction. Is this insider trading? Um, and will it, because the ETF, people, some people already know that it will not be approved. Or is this a healthy correction? Or is it some other reason? All right, team. My name's Austin. This has been Altcoin Daily. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Like.